Hello. Welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a worker placement slash deck building game. We're going to be talking about Dune Imperium. And in this game, you will be placing your workers out on the board to take actions. And you'll also be building a deck that will also allow you to take actions that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to give you a very brief overview of the rules. Tell you what we do like, what we don't like. Then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not June Imperium is worth your time and bother today and in the future. So remember, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button, leave a comment in that section down below and like bullshit. We'll see you after this. Bollocks! So, June Imperium, how do you play this game? So, June Imperium is a cross between worker placement where you'd be placing your workers out on the board to take actions and also a deck building game, right? The game is split up into two phases. You've got the agents phase where you'll be placing your workers out on the board. Then you've got the reveal turn where you'll be using all of your leftover cards to maybe buy other cards and do other stuff. So we're not going to go into a massive in-depth explanation of this because that would just be completely and utterly stupid, but we're going to give you a brief overview of the action spaces and some of the cards and all that sort of shit here. So in the agents phase, what you'll be doing, you'll be placing one of your workers out on the board. First thing you've got to do though, you've got to look through your hand of cards and then you will select a card that has the same icon on it as the space that you want to place your worker on, right? You might have to pay a cost as well. You might have to pay some water if you go into one of the desert spaces, but if you can fulfill the requirements and you'll place your worker and you'll get the benefit, right? Standard stuff. So some of the spaces that you can send your workers to, you can send them to Arakeen. This is a combat space. You'll be able to recruit a troop and draw a card. Arakeen's controller gains one Solari, which is the currency in the game, right? You might want to send them to the Hall of Oratory, and this allows you to recruit a troop, and during your reveal turn, you'll gain one persuasion if you have an agent here. Persuasion is another form of currency that will allow you to buy cards in the reveal phase, right? You might want to send your worker to the high council and you'll only be able to do this once per game but if you do it then every round subsequently you'll be able to get to persuasion that you can spend on extra cards yeah there are spaces on the board where you'll be able to collect spice and if you go to the cell melange space you'll be able to convert that spice into solari right which will give you money there's also the research station which if you pay two water you'll be able to draw three cards and put them in your hand and there's also the sword master you'll have to pay eight solari for but it will give you a third agent that you can use from that turn onwards there's also four faction tracks on the board if you send an agent now you'll be able to move up one space on the relevant track and if you go past the victory point symbol you're going to get a victory point right and if you're the first player to get to the top then you will take the marker and if somebody else goes past you on that track they'll get the marker but if you get to the top you will be able to keep the marker permanently right so once you're finished playing your agents you will have to take a reveal turn what you'll do you'll get all the cards that you didn't use and then you will place them in front of you and then you'll be able to use the persuasion on the cards to buy other cards right you might want to buy the voice card for two persuasion it says choose any board space opponents can't send their next agent there this round so that's a good way of blocking a space without even putting an agent on there you might take the arrakis recruiter and this just gives you a solari but in the reveal phase it gives you a combat strength and a persuasion or you might want to play the power play card for five persuasion it says gain two influence instead of one but you have to trash this card and like Dominion style, that means to take it out of the game. Or you might play the Worm Riders card, right? And this will give you two spice. It'll also give you some pretty strong combat benefits in the reveal phase, right? So there's loads and loads of cards to buy. I don't think there's that many duplicates in the deck, right? So once you've done that, you'll move on to the combat phase, right? You'll see on the board that there is a garrison space and then there's the main combat space. When you go to a space with a sword on it, you'll be able to move some of your troops from the garrison into the combat, as well as fresh troops into the combat itself. You'll be able to play any combat related intrigue cards and then the player with the highest combat strength will win the reward on the combat card right as the further into the game you get the more likely there's going to be victory points at stake this can make or break your chances of winning the game there's a couple of more or less inconsequential phases you've got the makers phase where you'll be making certain spaces that haven't been used more tempting like lords of war deep right and then you've got the recall phase where you'll just be resetting things for the next round right further to this each player has got a leader card and this gives you 
a special ability as well as some special starting components you might want to pick up or you might not want to pick them up it looks a bit weird but you might want to pick up duke leto atreides and this says sending an agent to a green board space costs you one solari less right because he's a tight wad all you might want is well i say it's 15 but don't think he is you might want to pick paul atreides and basically he says you may look at the top card of the deck at any time which very want it or you might pick up glossu the beast raban he's got the arrakis fiefdom and you start the game with one spice and one solari right so in my opinion a lot of these special abilities aren't that great and there's not really that much to choose between any of these right so you'll keep doing this you'll keep building your deck up you'll keep putting your agents out on the board and then the first player to reach 10 victory points will trigger the end of the game you'll be able to play any entry cards that you want and then whoever has the most victory points after that will be the winner of June Imperium. So what do we like about June Imperium? So the first thing that we like about this game is that first of all it seems rather familiar right and ordinarily I'd say that was a bad thing right because we like playing innovative games but you feel quite a home player in this I mean if you've played Lords of Waterdeep or you've played the Lost Ruins of Arnak which sort of unfairly gets compared to this I know I'm comparing that game to this at the moment but that's just because I'm confused and a bit infirm right but if you played those games this is going to seem less daunting than it otherwise would because it's got the same kind of mechanics sort of in in there the competition for places is always high when you're playing with four there's always agonizing choices to make the tried and tested formula of do you go to a space that's going to be beneficial for you or do you go to a space that's not going to be that beneficial for you but is going to block somebody else from going there and derail their plans right so there's this very very familiar worker placement element to this that you're going to feel quite at home with so the next thing that we like about this is that the game length isn't determined by a set number of rounds how many games have you played where there's say five six seven eight rounds and you're all scrambling around get your stuff together before the time runs out which means that a lot of these games start off with these broad options and gradually the options narrow the further into the game you get you ain't going to get that with this because the end game mechanism will be triggered when somebody gets to 10 victory points and that doesn't necessarily mean that the game goes on and on and on forever it feels like they've got the pacing of this game dead on it's never ever boring there's always a multitude of things to do a multitude of things to think about do you think about what's on the board do you think about what you're going to be trying to get in your deck are you going to worry about what's going on in the combat there's always loads of things to think about so the final thing that we like about this is the reveal turn right this is really really clever because it means that not only are the cards that you don't want to use in that turn going to be used in the reveal phase but it also means that you're going to have to choose which cards you leave for the reveal phase because they might be more beneficial in that phase so you're constantly weighing up whether or not you should spend that card to allow you to go to a certain space or whether you should save it back for the reveal turn which is going to allow you to buy better cards and get better stuff into your deck that may or may not come out when you want it so it's sort of like weighing up do you get instant gratification or do you wait and bide your time before you pull the trigger so what don't we like about june imperium so the first thing that we don't like about it is the theme i've never been a june fan i saw the original movie and i thought it was dog shit and i've seen the new movie and i thought it was dog shit as well i read the book years and years ago i didn't really like it i really don't like the june universe it's too weird and it just seemed like it was a response to something rather than a narrative in its own right i'll tell you what i did enjoy though i did find the spice diver redux of the original film quite interesting but i just don't think that this theme translates into a board game that well it just doesn't excite me at all so the second thing that we don't like about june imperium is that the aesthetic of the game is really really awful right have a look at the artwork on the board it's just completely uninspiring i thought that was a, an exhaust pipe for an old motorbike on the board right but apparently it turns out that it's some kind of weird spaceship yeah you've got that massive hole in the board where the combat takes place and you've got the cubes and all that stuff the beige shades it just looks absolutely drab and dire i know there's a deluxification expansion that you can get for this but really am i going to pay 50 quid just so i got something decent to look at they should have tried harder with the original game and as such this really does make me feel like i'm looking at a puddle of sick so the final thing that we don't like about this game is that it only goes up to four players right and that is a massive limitation for me i would have preferred five players at a minimum there's don't see any reason why you couldn't have five players 
in this. But if you could go up to six, maybe make the game a little bit shorter because obviously it's going to impede on the length of the game. That would have been welcome. Maybe an expansion in the future will deal with this issue because I don't really see any reason why you can't play with six players. Obviously, like we said, the time constraints is going to be a problem, but that's nothing to do with the publisher, is it? That's on me. If I want to play this game for three, four hours, that is down to me. So yeah, four players really does limit the amount of times that this is going to hit the table for us. And as a result, it sucks. So to summarise, is June Imperium worth your time and bother today and in the future? So we're going to say, yes, absolutely. This is a truly intriguing blend of worker placement and deck building. Where we've seen it all before, we feel like we haven't. I know, it's weird, isn't it? It's let down by the uninspiring theme, the drab colour palette, and some woeful components like the cubes. There was no need to bung cubes in here. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's not 2001, is it? But it's the gameplay mechanics that rises this game above its multitude of negatives to make this one of the best games that we've played before in quite a while or haven't played before if that makes sense so there you go that's june imperium remember if you're new then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit i'll see you next time